Welcome to the Legionary. Um, in front of you is a Galea or Roman soldier's helmet. Obviously, it's a fairly iconic um, piece of armor and head headgear. It's very recognizable from um, comic books, like such as Asterix and Obelix. And then obviously right down to the movies, Any, anything from Gladiator, well, maybe not Gladiator, they were pretty bad, um, to, um, I, I would say, I would err on the side of uh, the Spartacus series, uh, the Stars one, um, the, the armor in that was pretty good. So yeah, with varying degrees of authenticity, um, yeah, the, it, it's a fairly recognizable piece of Roman equipment. But where does it originate from, I suppose, is, is the question. And uh, the answer to that is it's actually a, a hybrid of many different designs. And um, then it, it's obviously, it's evolved to, uh, to, to become the Roman helmet that, that we all recognize. So if you think of the, uh, the Greek hoplite helmet, like those in, say, the movie 300 or, or Troy, I'm doing a lot of, um, I'm doing a few more references to pop culture because I'm, um, Obviously, that's a, for, for most people, that's where they'll get their their first look at something like that. Um, so, yeah, the, the one that Brad Pitt wore in Troy, for example, was, you know, a fairly, you know, fairly, fairly accurate depiction of a, of a Greek hoplite helmet. And then 300 also wasn't too bad. And they had cheek guards, they had a nose guard, and then you had like the big horsehair crest, which would, would have gone over the top. So that would be like one of the main influences. And obviously Rome pretty much inherited uh, the, the, the Hellenistic, you know, sort of, um, what do you say, world uh, that slowly took over it. So re replaced uh, Greece as the uh, preeminent power in, in the Mediterranean and therefore adopted a lot of a lot of its culture, including its weapons and armor. So that's your primary influence, but I think the most pertinent and important influence comes from, um, would have been after Caesar's conquest of Gaul. So around uh, 50 BCE, um, we know that the people of Gaul were definitely talented armourers, even within this area here uh, in the Dordogne. Uh, there were very renowned armourers amongst the, uh, the different tribes and peoples of, of, of this region. So they, they, they knew how to work metal. And um, it's not something that we usually equate to or what, what the Romans would have referred to as barbarians, because, you know, we always get the idea of a savage, you know, long haired, bearded, um, lunatic racing around half naked on a battlefield. It couldn't be any further from the truth. And the reality was is that they they had armor, probably not as not not in the not in the uh, quality and quantity that the Romans had, but um, when they did make it, it was um, it was pretty good. <laughs> so the Romans would have encountered this. They would have seen them worn by their enemies, and like all good Romans. They would, uh, they would adopt them, adapt them to their own use, and then improve the design over time. It's, it's what the Romans did. So two particular designs sort of stand out in the sort of the, the, the armors of Gaul, and they would have built the helmets that they would have seen, and that's uh, the Ajan, and then the port-style helmets, because they had um, uh, neck guards like this, similar to this. The shape of the helmet also wasn't a round bowl, it was more form-fitting. And then the cheek guards, uh, obviously not as refined as this, but when you look at them, the, the Ajan and Port um, Port models, you, you can see the um, you can see the uh, the resemblance. So those are the ones that were thought of to have influenced this uh, this latest style. So yeah, again we have a more form fitting helmet with reinforced areas around the uh, around the neck here. So this this corrugation there, this this form here reinforces the the neck. You've got the brow guard here, and then obviously you've got the cheek guards here, which are all reinforced. Uh, with a lot of decorative elements thrown in. So here, this brow ridge here, this brow band here is is, is extremely decorative. Uh, these are um, these rivets here, are the, the rosettes, these are all a red enamel. And so the, this is a Roman's like bling, let's put it that way. And so the eyebrows here, um, these are very typical of, 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 of Gallic helmets as well. So the, the Romans adopted this eyebrow design here. That is really sort of the, uh, the design, the influences that, that, that um, led us to this style of helmet. And so this particular one that we're looking at is an Imperial Gallic Type D. It, how do we arrive at this classification of, of a helmet? Well, it's thanks to a guy called Henry Russell Robinson, and he works at the Royal Armoury in the UK. And in 1975, he published a book which was called The Armour of Imperial Rome. 
and he categorized all the Roman helmets that had been found. Um, so we had like Imperial Gallic uh, from classified from A to K. And then they had Imperial Italic, which was classified from A to H. And then you had subcategories as well. Um, so the Gallia that we're looking at is a reproduction of a Gallic type D that was found in the Rhine. Wiesenau, Wiesenau, in Germany. Um, and we know this because of these these designs here. So all the points that I was that I'd highlighted before, or the iron um, ear protectors here, uh, this detailing here, so the bronze edging on the um, on the face guards here, on the cheek guards, uh, this uh, design here on the brow guard, and then obviously the 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 four the four sort of four lined uh, eyebrows here. Um, these are all elements of the uh, of the original um, Gallic Type D. Uh, it's a bit of a shame, but the uh, the original Gallic Type D, or the, the original helmet uh, that, that was found in Weissenau, was um, actually lost in the Second World War uh, due to bombing. And so we only have photographs of the original and I think a few elements that were left. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the story of that. Um, thanks for watching part one on uh, the Gallia, the... Uh, the the roman helmet and um in part two we'll be looking at the anatomy of the gallia um how it's designed and why it's designed that way um so it's designed its component parts and then um we'll take a look inside as well and um, discuss how they were how they were put together and uh how they were used so yeah thanks for watching and i'll be back with uh part two as soon as i can